Cindy Otter here with my artsy endeavors. How are you doing? Oops, sorry, my camera's moving. Um, I'm doing really well. I've <laughs> I've been gone for six months or more. Um, unfortunately, I've dealt with a couple different surgeries, and but you know, it's all good. I'm good. So I am here today for a hop with the Art Joy of Sharing. And what we're going to talk about today is different embellishments and what kind of embellishments we make for our journals. Um, I have several different things here I want to show you, but I'm going to start off with this one. I was actually playing around with watercolor and I just sat here I was watching a movie and I got doodling and I'm like oh this is gonna be fun let's do this so I figured I'd show you because I think they turned out really cool so basically this is not watercolor it's color burst which in my mind is the same thing so um, this was just pieces I had over in my stash that I've been I was playing with color burst this day so what I want to show you is what I did with them this one I'm going to use, and I'll use this one a little bit, and maybe this one. Alright, so first I'm going to show you how I do it, and then I will show you some others that I have done. And I think these are really cool to add to journals. You can make tags out of them, you can make all kinds of stuff. So let's start. Um, first thing I did, like I said, I played around with color burst on this one. So there's a couple ways you can do this. You can do the whole page, which I'm going to do on this one really quick, hopefully. Oh, that's a marker, I don't want that. I just want a pen. So I'm using a tool, T-U-L, pen. So what I did is once I got these, I started looking. I said, oh, these are really cool shapes, right? So I just took a pen and started playing around with the different shapes of what was on the board. What was, I'm sorry, what was on the paper? I don't know where a board come from. Um, so I just started messing around with these different shapes and some of them I kind of made on my own like this one here I'll say this is here a little bit of kind of whitish color okay and then we have some yellow here that we're gonna block off okay get the idea <laughs> basically what I'm doing is I am playing around with what is on the page so let me finish this one real quick um, I'm not going exactly with every single line because then I would be here like this. So I'm just just playing with what we got here. So I'm just making it kind of wobbly and here and that. So what I do with this is I would just cut this out. I would fussy cut it a little, not a whole lot. Sometimes I just leave them like this until I use them. Other times I'll go through and I'll kind of fussy cut around the lines. Now let me show you some of these that I've done before, which are right here. I just really like these, and I'm, I'm not quite sure why. This one to me looks like a kitty cat. I don't know why, but it does. Um, so this is one thing that I do with any type of watercolor that I've got. Now, you can make all kinds of things with these. You, Like I said, you can put them on backgrounds, uh, on tags, you can use them, uh, you can punch them, you can do all kinds of things with this. So I have a little, little tag here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put this one down as a background on this little card. I'm gonna have to paint it yellow or green first. So let's let's just do some green. Do I want it green? No, I'm gonna do it blue. Just because I can. So I'm just gonna paint this. I gotta get this off my cutting board. My cutting board will be nasty. Um I'm just gonna paint this blue real quick with a Posca. No big deal. 
I don't have to be exact about it. I don't have to be really messy. You know, it doesn't matter. Just throw some blue in there. All right. So I've got this pretty much set up with blue. That's good. All right. So now what I'm going to do real quick is dry this as soon as I get my stuff out here. Just real quick dry it. All right, and then I'm going to put this on. Now, when I do this, I can do it all different types of ways. I can just use a part of it and cut it off, which I think is what I'm going to do. I'm actually going to cut this little piece off and I'm going to cut this piece off. Whoops. Well, I just cut part of the tag off, but you get the gist. All right. Now that's a cute background just to start with. And from here you can go on and put your layers on, your stamping, your stencils, all kinds of stuff. And it just gives you a very interesting background to start with. So that's what these are. And like I said, I do this with the watercolor stuff. I do it with these um, color uh, bursts, which I used before. Like this one here would be really interesting to do because what you could do is you could take your pen and you could go all up and down these. And wouldn't that make a fantastic border on the top of your journal page? You just play with it. You play with whatever shapes you see or if you decide this would make a real pretty flower, go for it. So, like I said, you can either punch them. What did I do with the punches? Oh, they're still sitting over there. Hold on just one second. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. You can tell I haven't done this in a while, right? I don't know how long this video is supposed to be, but I'm going to try to make it quick. All right. So, okay, here we go. And that punch doesn't work. But anyways, there was a flower. So if you can imagine this right here as a flower. Let's see, it went like this, like this, like this, like this, like this. I'm going to say like that. So even that, if you just start out with your flower and punch it out, you have some really cool things to play with. So in that flower, I've got a few circles right um, I decide I like this here there's an outline of the yellow I'm gonna do that um, maybe I want to make this little border here that looks a different color so anyways use your imagination and play with what you see on the paper so there's that little flower that I was just playing around with um, Another thing you can do, I like to use the butterfly punch. Hopefully this one will work for me. And I like to make butterflies that have interesting pieces to them. So here's the butterfly. And you don't have to do this with a black pen. You can do it with a white pen. You can do it with whatever kind of pen you want. But I, of course you guys know, I love background lines. So here's my background and I'll play with these. Maybe I'll put a few circles in. Maybe I'll just decide to take this little piece and put it there. You know, I'm sure you get the point by now. So basically play around with your watercolor or color bursts or whatever kind of um, water soluble you have and just mess around with it. And then take these and just look for things in it. Look for things that would be really pretty. I like this, make sure that's one piece. I like this right here. Okay, and just to enhance it and make it look better, use your white pen or your black pen or um, whatever you want to use on this and just bring out those differences in that color and that butterfly is going to be gorgeous. So that's one thing I wanted to show you. Um, again, while I was playing with watercolor, I'm going to show you something else that I was doing. Now, this is still on the same kind of concept. I decided to just make marks. Let me bring you guys in. 
I just decided to make some marks and then I went around them with a black pen. I think they're very interesting. I think they'll be fun to play with. Uh, here's another just single color of one. And these will make great backgrounds. Um, another thing I did with this is I made all these little, I don't want to call them planets, but I made all these little round pieces. And again, just playing with the color and I think it gives it a really interesting thing to do. These are watercolor. I decided to cut out some pieces and I just played around with a pen and just gave some borders to them. You know, these will be great to put a couple words on, maybe, you know, a quote, maybe your thought for the day, whatever it happens to be. And these are cute little additions to add to your journal that are really simple to make. So there's a few embellishments using watercolor. Now I'm going to totally flip the media and I'm going to go to something different. I'm going to go to um, Shrinky Dinks. Where are they? Now a long time ago, I can't say long, yeah actually it was a long time ago, I made these Shrinky Dinks and they were just sitting in a bucket somewhere and I wasn't sure what I was going to do with them. So I found them the other day and I have been playing with fabric. I'm really enjoying playing with the fabric. And I decided to take these shrinky dinks and see what I could make with them as far as the fabric stuff. All right, so I'm just trying to find ones that haven't been used as projects. So if you look at these, I think they're really cool. The fabric in the background, all I did was cut it and I just glued, whoops, cut it and glued it to the back of the shrinky dink. That's all I did. And I just think it makes them really pretty. It kind of makes the shrinky dink pop out a little bit more. I know nobody likes the word pop, but hey, it's what it does. Here's another one. This one I decided to leave the, the sides showing. But again, I think they're going to be really cool to use in embellishments. This is just a real thin piece of I don't know what it is. And I um, had used a stamp on it. Oops, let me get you here. Can't see it that way. See this green? I used a, um, it's just a piece of fabric that I used a stencil and I um, did it with paint, acrylic paint. So I was just doing a lot of fabric with acrylic paint on it. And I have some of that in here that I can show you. But I took these shrinky dinks and I decided, all right, I needed to make them just kind of a little different. So this one was a piece of paper that I put down on it. And I'm going to have to get used to my camera angle. I have a completely new camera set up and I'm not sure I like this angle, so we'll have to figure that out. But here's a painted piece of fabric. All I did was just took an end of probably a pen or um, a paintbrush or whatever, something round or a little dowel, and I just did a bunch of red dots on the paint. Well, what it did to this shrinky dink is it gave it just a little bit in that background that I like. So there's the shrinky dinks. They're very easy to do. Um, oh, here's another one. This is just a girl. And the flower and the blue and all that is the fabric on the back. So I'm just taking these scraps and just figuring out different things to do with them. So there's those. Now... What, oh, here's another one. Sorry, one more. I think it's cute. Now, these shrinky dinks are pretty much clear. This one has a piece of paper on it. Um, the shrinky dinks are pretty much clear. Um, the only thing you have is whatever color you put on them before you shrink them. And um, the black from the stamp, which is how I do them. I don't draw them. I use stamps. I'm not a good draw, draw person. So... With adding this fabric to the background, I think it really makes the image more um, more interesting. It gives it a little bit more oomph to it. So there's those. Now, I have made a couple things with those shrinky dinks. Um, I've also been making these, these patches of fabric. I am just painting fabric. I'm over on my sewing machine. I'm showing, sewing it together and just playing around making a bunch of these little things. Well, this one I decided to add, um, magic is something you make, and I just decided to add it to this piece of fabric. Now, how quick would that be to just, you know, put down on your journal page and, you know, on a background? 
Here's another one. This one is just says, friends, I took this piece of fabric, it was just a scrap, and I stuck it to um, a piece of uh, board that I had glued a bunch of paper on and cut into strips. Well, then I put the fabric on it and I just added this little sunflower, or this yellow flower, I should say and put the thing friends on it. So all I have to do is put a little tape on there, boom, it's down in my book. Um, on the same line of those flower clusters, oh, here's another one that's got a shrinky dink on it. This is just a piece of, pa uh, piece of fabric with shrinky dink. And I can, again, just put something on the back of this, a little glue, put it down in my book. Now on that same line with the fabric, another thing I've been doing is just I've been playing with scraps. I wanted to see what I could make, what I couldn't, how, you know, whether I liked them or I didn't. Um, so I've taken a lot of fabric. Let me move these aside. I've taken a lot of fabric that I've painted on. Um, and I've been playing around with embroidery floss. No, I'm not slow stitching. No, I'm not embroidering. I'm just playing around with the floss with the needle. Um, and I added a couple things to it. So this I thought was really cool, and if I wanted to, I could get one of those shrinky dinks. I mean, this is a little busy, but I could use a shrinky dink on this on my page. Um, however, my thought with this is I could put this on the page and kind of use it as a background piece, maybe put a black and white photo or something of that nature on it. So I have a few of these here that I've done. Um, I'm using buttons, I'm using little um, applique pieces, all kinds of different fabric. It doesn't really matter. See how wonderful my sewing is? <laughs> it doesn't really matter. I'm just playing. And uh, this is a piece of lace that I decided to put this little piece of ribbon on and, and a button. So I've been finding different ways to use fabric. One, because I have a ton of it. Um, and two, I just, I've, I'm into this niche of I want to play with fabric right now. So these are painted pieces of fabric. Here's one that's got stencils on it. This one, a um, little piece of lace, a little piece, another little piece of lace, and a pearl button on it. Here's one that's very plain. It's just a um, green with a green plaid on it. I'm looking over here because here's my bucket of them. I'm just looking to see what I've got. This one, um, okay, let's see, here's a couple. This one here, quite a few years ago, I bought um, these little patches off someone on Etsy, and I wish I knew the name. <coughs> Go on and look for fabric words. And this is what I found. She sent me a whole bunch of them, and they're really cool. So I decided, huh, why don't I use one of those? So I got on my sewing machine. <coughs> Pardon me. Get on my sewing machine, put a few pieces of scrap fabric together, and then decided to add that to it. Again, on a journal page, really quick and easy. Here we go. <coughs> i got to get a quick drink of water, real quick. Here's another one. Um, this one, I played around again with the embroidery thread here and there. It's painted um, fabric, painted fabric, and I just had fun with it. Okay, I know I have to keep this video short, so that is what I'm going to show you today. Um, I have whole bunches of other pieces here that are kind of works in progress. This one I added a charm to. This is paper and fabric. So what I, the point I'm trying to make is take everything or anything that you have that's, I don't want to say older, but you have a stash of, and figure out a different way to make it another piece of art that you can stick into your journals or on a tag and just make it look really, really pretty. Why not? That's what we have the stuff for. So these are the fabric. These are the watercolor um, and the shrinky dinks. And that's what I'm going to share with you today. So I hope you go ahead and follow all the links in my um, comments section because you're going to see all different kinds of ideas and videos about how to take your supplies and make little embellishments that's going to make your life a little bit happier. Isn't that cute? Why not? Why not? All right. 
Thank you so much for watching. Like I said, enjoy the rest of the hop. Don't forget to check out all the different links. And I will see you again. Thanks for watching, everybody. Bye-bye.